Well done. Okay. What do you think? Did you like it? Can you play it better? Like when you're at home and there's no one watching, and there's not someone sitting here right beside you, like this, looking at all your hands, yeah? Um, that always kind of happens. It's like you never play it as well in public as you play it at home. You were kind of disappearing a little bit, you know? But when it was away from you, you were just so much more involved and it was much better. So, one of the things I want you to think about is your guitar playing is not just about sitting in your room practicing at home. Let's think about the things we need to fix. We need to fix your technique. You hold that guitar with your left hand a little bit like you're grabbing on to something. Do you know what I mean? Like you like, better, I better hold on to the to the neck of the guitar. Okay. But I think you need to hold on to this neck of the guitar in a very different manner. You need to address the guitar, right? Bring your hand to the instrument. See where this thumb is? Now your audience can't see Ryan's thumb, can you? No. Okay, so Ryan's thumb has disappeared. Before Ryan, your thumb was like, hello, yeah, way up there, <laughs> like that. Like, go back to your old technique. Oh my God, it's terrible. Okay, but even your shoulder comes up. What is that note you play when you play the third fret of the B string? Uh, it's D. Very good, the note D. What finger do you normally play it with? Okay, when you play it, you usually play it, take your hand off for just now, about here, okay? Which means you're right at the bottom of the fret, okay? You're miles away from where I really want you to be. Every single time you play a note on the guitar, I want you to address the note right behind the fret, right behind the metal bar, okay? So sometimes when you play a D, it's like you just play it no more. You get to about here, where it just becomes a note, okay? That's really risky, because look, not a note, a note. Much of a difference there, is there? But look, if I'm here, that's really just clearly the note, no problem. When you play a C with your first finger on the first fret of the B string, you're also using your second finger and your third finger. So try the three again. Good, and then go back to the C. Ah, look, two and three have gone. Ah, we'll help, we'll help you out. Okay, just finger one. Yeah, good. Nah, you missed the string, you went to the G, go back. Okay, go between those two notes a little bit. So we need to see if you can do a crescendo that gets louder, step by step, stage by stage. Okay, so can we try from here, this is bar 17 to the end, and can we try very quietly in each bar, in bar 18 a little bit more, in 19 a little bit more, in 20 a little bit more, and then that chord is the loudest note. Cool, and what happens when you do these two different things? Yeah? So I feel like the string's a little bit tighter down by the bridge. And you get a faster sound, the sound arrives quickly, okay? And it's got a certain, they call it like a vitality to it, an energy to it. It maybe is a little bit more harsh, the sound, a little bit more spiky. So it's quite good if you have these accents above the music. Yeah? The main things I want you to think about is, one, when you get the chance to play for people, maybe you'll get the chance at school, you know, if there's a wee talent competition or there's an end of school music night or anything, you need to make the performance <coughs> less about looking at the music and more about performing to the people that are here, okay? You also need to think more about this left hand, because it was like this, grabbing onto the neck of the guitar. And then you start to make a little bit more of all of the markings that are in the piece, okay? The drama of them, the sound of them, okay? But actually, you have a nice sense of rhythm, Ryan. You're a musical guy, okay? So, I think if you did these things, you'd get better and better. Okay, Ryan, very good, excellent, good work. <laughs> it's like you're saying to yourself, I don't really need this finger, do you know what I mean? I'll not use it, I'll just squash it all in. So every time you do D, G, E, you're using finger four, which means you're making this finger redundant. 